This is the day we've been waiting for for a long time. That was amazing. Huge potato cob is like bigger than Fran. No way, guys. We've got to get him for a closer look. This is the day we've been waiting for for a long time. It seems the wind has dropped enough to allow us to get offshore to the outer Great Barrier Reef. The reefs out here are spoken about as some of the best in the world. Let's go check them out. Made it to the reef. A little bit bumpier than we would have liked, but we've made it to the outer Great Barrier Reef. And it looks like we're the only ones out here within miles. Let's get in there, the viz looks nice. Although there is like a wave breaking at the moment. So we're kind of feeling like we should have brought surfboards rather than snorkeling gear. It's a bit rough on the outside, but hopefully we can get into this little protected bay here. Last person in sinks. <laughs> I'm always the quickest one to get ready. What happened, Jack? My weight's on backwards. We haven't dove in so long. Getting everything all mixed up. Looks like he's gonna stink. See you in there. Amazing, hey? That huge potato cob was like bigger than Fran. It was. I, know. I went to wave at it, and I reckon it thought my it was gonna eat my fingers. It came right up. That was really, really cool. So many friendly and tasty fish in there. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing to see. So nice to see those colours again. The beautiful blues of the Great Barrier Reef. What time is it? It's time to go catch some fish. We've now moved, I just spell over the camera. <laughs> Started to go catch some fish. We've just moved about 20 miles to the north. This area here, we're allowed to keep fish. So fingers crossed we can find something on these bommies and have a bit of a cook up this afternoon. <laughs> Different species of coral trout today. This one's a common coral trout, different to the one Fran got yesterday. And we're actually gonna stay out at the reef tonight, gonna camp on board, 
have a bit of a cook up with this guy and really make the most of this little weather window we've got before heading back to back to the islands. Let's fill it up. Don't you dare. Say your last words. <laughs> yeah. Fish on. Fish on. That didn't take long. As soon as this bait hit the water, just thrown out one of the little bit of off cuts with a bone on it. That's are open. What do you think it is? Spangle? It's not really fighting like a spangled emperor, but I'd like it to be. It's fighting a bit like a shark. Looks like a good fish. Oh, what? what? <laughs> Yellow lip emperor. Oh. He's uh, he's hooked in the gut. That's why he's fighting oddly. What a beauty, eh? Hey? Yeah. Yellow lip emperor. One of the most elusive fish to chase on the reef if you're spearfishing. They're so, so challenging. Beautiful <laughs> yellow lip emperor. We'll let him go. See you, mate. <laughs> So we're going up for a sunset on the top deck, but it's a bit rolly, so I don't know if it's going to be romantic or a bit like a, a rodeo at the moment, but we'll go give it a crack. How is it? Very rocky. Yeah. Off to bed. Off to bed. <laughs> you look like a giant. <laughs> it's way too choppy tonight to cook anything on the boat. Yeah, it's a bit yeah. rocky and rolly, guys, but we're going to continue the episode in the morning, which is pretty cool. We're waking up on the Great Barrier Reef, so we'll Keep see watching. you then. <laughs> So the best thing about sleeping out here on the reef is you get to wake up right on the reef. Uh, it makes up for the rocky and rolly night where sleep isn't all that good. But right here, looks like a beautiful place to jump in. Looks like there's some caves and swim throughs, this whole edge. So we're gonna jump in and um, see what's going on down there. Oh, there's a couple of white tip reef sharks have just pulled up around the boat. That's pretty cool. Good sign. There might be a bit of fish life down there. All right, that wind has actually started to pick up a little bit now. And to get back to base camp, we've got to head straight back into it. So. We're gonna get going now before it picks up and gets any worse. And we're gonna have one hell of a cook up back there on the islands once we get back. All right, so we've come back into the islands now and there is this beautiful blue lagoon behind us that's made up uh, by a couple of sort of islands around the outside. And there's this natural deep hole in the middle. It's pretty incredible. It looks amazing from the drone. And there's a couple of these islands that have a white sandy beach on them. So we're going to pull in for a bit of a lunch stop. What's that floating like on the surface there, Fran? Is that a log or a crocodile? Like, well, just off that point there. No way, guys. Just where you least expect it, that log is a crocodile. Fran's got it on the drone and I've got it on the binoculars. This is the, the last place you would expect to see a crocodile. Holy moly. Oh, this is epic to see a croc in such clean water in the shallows. I've got to get in for a closer look. Let's go ashore and have some lunch. I think that crocodile must have just been perched up here in the sand doing some sunbaking and what a 
beautiful little island he's chosen sort of out of the wind nice and peaceful until we rocked up but oh such a shame i thought that was going to be a great opportunity to swim with a, a nice sized crocodile in some crystal clear water but we tried and tried and tried it just didn't quite work out we we're having the drone in the air to try spot him and i was swimming over but unfortunately just didn't work out sorry mum mum's one rule was jack no trying to swim with crocodiles so sorry mum but didn't work out so maybe another day to surf. Yum, yum. How is it, Fran? Really good. We are sort of hoping that the crocodile likes the smell of our ceviche and makes his way around the corner here to have a bit of a look. We've got a bit of a, a vantage point on him here. Bye. So Jack has gone to look more into why and where the crocs are here in the crystal clear water and as usual it's my turn to cook. So tonight in the Back to Basic Beach Kitchen we're going to have a couple of things. First, some coral trout sushi bite and coral trout popcorn. Let's see how I go. But first let's get the fire started. Now, with trying to swim with that one earlier today, guys, I certainly wouldn't recommend that. Um, but I'm sort of of the opinion that if the right crocodile is in the right area, and you approach it the right way with the right body language, then I think I'd get the chance to do it. Now, while it was a complete shock to see that crocodile out in the clear water, it's actually this island that has got the highest number of recorded crocodile attacks anywhere in Queensland, which is crazy. And one of the reasons for that is just behind me here. So crocodiles can smell fresh water, they can smell an estuary system for miles and miles and they'll travel large distances to get to that. And behind me here, this is a beautiful little estuary system that runs all the way back into the island. It's just kind of camouflaged by clear water and white sandy beaches, which almost gives you a false sense of security. But um, truth be told, crocodiles will travel a long distance just to get here and travel up this system. Gonna boil the rice for this sushi shirt. This guy is just not leaving me alone. He's come and woke us up every morning in his anchor at just 6 a.m. And there's poop all over the boat. So let's just perch up here with a bit of a vantage point and see if anything comes in with that tide. Actually, last time we were here a couple of years ago now, there was a crocodile attack while we're here. So one of the staff members from the resort was going for a snorkel just offshore. He was sort of looking down, going about his business and something latched onto his head and his neck. He um, got into a bit of a battle with it, managed to free himself and saw a crocodile. He was pretty busted up, but managed to get back to shore and flown out, you know, emergency to hospital. Thankfully, he survived, but that's certainly a story that's always in the back of your mind when you're swimming around this area. It was actually in that same month, just after we left, there was another crocodile attack as well. So two in the one month. And actually, we just refueled yesterday. I was having a chat to one of the staff members and he told me a pretty interesting yarn that happened just last week. So there's a, a guy, a staff member that does an early morning swim, six o'clock every morning, swims from the rocks here to the rocks down there. Uh, and there was a couple of guests perched up on their chairs, kind of looking down into the water, watching him swim. And they start screaming out, screaming out, screaming out. And he's, he's swimming, 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 and looks up and sees all the commotion as they're screaming. And he turns around and there's a crocodile following him and it's just starting to close the gap, close the gap and accelerate. The bloke reckons he set a new world record and just accelerated for the shore, got out of the water and then the crocodile sort of disappeared into the depths. But from the description, it sounds like a pretty similar to size to the one we saw. So I was kind of wondering whether that crocodile we saw was the, the same one chasing people on his morning swim here. But guys, this certainly isn't meant to spook anyone from swimming here. This is one of our favorite swimming spots on the whole coast. Absolutely beautiful snorkeling. It's just a, a fairly interesting fact, I thought. You know, the most crocodile attacks in such a, a place like this where you, you wouldn't really expect it. And it certainly serves as a bit of a reminder that no matter where you are, what it looks like, you can't be complacent in croc country. So we'll be keeping our eyes peeled, definitely here going north. The trout for the sushi will be half thinly sliced cooked in lemon juice and the other half flambe. For the popcorn coral trout, we're gonna cut it in really tiny little cubes and then shake it into breadcrumb, all-purpose seasoning, salt and pepper. And then shallow fry it in olive oil. 
I do have to get back to base camp though because Fran is uh, she's starting a bit of a cook up back there. He's back. There she is, all set up. What a woman, eh? Okay, now that the rice has cooled down, we're gonna make little balls and then fry them in olive oil and then top them up with the flambe coral trout with a little bit of sweet chili sauce, uh, cupy mayo and soy sauce. What happened here, Fre? Found out this rice is very sticky. <laughs> <laughs> it's sticking now to all the wrong places. <laughs> It just isn't numb. You gotta have a shower before you come to bed. <laughs> I forgot this. Uh, <laughs> and it's coral trout crackling. Oh, oh look at Ooh. our pan's on fire. Yeah, look at it going. It's going up. <laughs> that's cool. Looks like that's meant to be happening, but it, <laughs> it definitely wasn't the plan. The pan's on fire. Holy <laughs> I did not expect that. Man, that was crazy. It was like a, some kind of a bad science experiment. <laughs> that was awesome. One thing to learn from that is if you ever have an oil fire, fire caused by oil, you can't extinguish it with water. Don't throw water on it, otherwise that will happen. I remember they told me that in school and I never quite realized until just then. Amazing, Fran. Well done. Which one are you going to start with? I want to do the comparison between the sushi bite ceviche and sushi bite plumbe. All right, go for it. So this one is the completely raw fish, no? Plumbe. How's that one, Fran? This one is really good and the fish is very delicate on top. And this one, this one is even better. Better? Yeah. I was scared the lemon was gonna overpower the sushi, but yeah. overpower the sweet chili sauce and the wasabi and stuff. But... Nice. Can't wait to try it. Well, crackling's always my first, hey. I love it, the trout crackling. Mm -mm. Coral trout crackling. Well done. And then? Popcorn coral trout. Coming closer. 